bad films are good in their own small way. Resident Evil, for example. Ignoring the adaption from a video game, it is an impressive piece of work in the B-movie action genre, whether you like them or not. It may sound silly, but making an action film can be much harder than making an original film, because there is not much room to grow. The filmmakers who make them are confined in these tight spaces in which they need to entertain you, and Paul Anderson's work on Resident Evil in that case is an excessive, brilliant trash to piece inside this genre. That's right. The speed of his narrative is perplexing, and his large world building is where his talents lie. Plus, some intricately complex action pieces in at least each of the Resident Evil films is an accomplishment that should be as impressive as it is bad. Before I praise Resident Evil, know that this is the cart before the horse. Apart from the first Resident Evil, the films are leading with their exploitation of the action genre and video game adaption. Anderson's jam-packed stories are not why you watch these films. The last films in the franchise have a speed at blink and you'll miss it. You're crying out loud. You're missing important plot points. Target is 72 miles and closer. Which is why I'll defend the first film because the pacing is on point. Where Anderson is not running on fumes, story-wise, to get to the next action scene. As he plays with the idea of adaption and not committing to fan service. In the later films, it takes literal seconds before Alice is thrown into another shootout. With the first Resident Evil, it's slow. You have the film adapting the eerie nature of the original work, where it feels like something is waiting around every corner. It has a stylistic atmosphere. Before you know it, the film has built another dimension right underneath our noses. And this speaks volumes for Anderson's ability to transition from one location to another at the drop of a hat or a blink of an eye. His ability to create these massive adventures in the later films is on full display even when he confines himself to a large mansion. Shows that even with his first film, he has this uncanny ability at building new spaces inside a small frame in moments, eventually seconds. Sometimes too fast, you don't realize what's happened and you've unlocked a new area to explore. You're crying out loud. You're missing important plot points. Standout moments in Resident Evil is those tension rising moments in the first half. The elevator decapitation, which highlights the transitions in the series. Where Star Wars has swipes, Paul Anderson made it so that the edit and the camera work as one. Put her out of the way! I don't like this kind of editing because it's like Bayhem half the time. You can't see what's happening. And the editing is all doing the work rather than the actors when it comes to the fight scenes. Literally single frames are spliced together, creating this disorienting impact. These fractioned shots exist subconsciously in your mind even if you don't recognize them. Certain times in the first film, Anderson subliminally does this. and in later films, it's just a progression on this hallmark of his films. Like Anderson trying to recreate the shower scene in Psycho, where the impact is implied rather than seen. Paul 
Paul Anderson doesn't have a whole lot of restraint as an action film director. Sometimes this approach works wonders, like the lasers in the first film, as again it's done with a lot of editing splices and it fits well because people are literally being cut into pieces, that it feels like you're inside the corridor with them. What I'm saying is you won't see traditional action in his films. You get the advanced attention span. Heavily stylized hallmarks. Paul Anderson will adapt with his subverted video game adaptions. Style aside, there is a subtle art to purist approach, lingering on a certain shot before prematurely moving forward, or just plain reverting to flashbacks. Have to get out of here. It's one of the biggest faults with the Resident Evil franchise, as it does not take itself seriously on the surface, a single moment like this one can work wonders. Sir. Like when it did with Alice walking through an empty house. Resident Evil is not very memorable, and I think that's due to its relentless pacing. Why can't I remember anything? as the stories are all kinds of lazy writing stuck together with superglue plot devices and twists, which is why I'm not going to try and make sense of the story. This is one of the defining aspects of the trash to piece. You watch for pure entertainment value, not its slim story that is regurgitated five different times. <laughs> Watching Resident Evil 2 Apocalypse, you really see how hard it is to do what Paul Anderson does. The second film was obviously a reaction to the fans' outcry with the first film because they did not get the video game adaption they were expecting. What do you mean by sanitized? In Resident Evil 2, the camera is settled and frankly boring in comparison. Instead of hitting with the kinetic energy of the first film, it slows it down. You can see what you take for granted with Paul Anderson because he makes it look easy when someone else directs his scripts. His visual style missing, an apocalypse does not contend to be a B-movie. In that sense, it fails. No one wants a normal Resident Evil movie. We want the Trash Master. There's no going back! No! With Resident Evil 3, it's as if Paul Anderson is complying with trilogy rules. He goes back to the original film, if only for a moment. Paul Anderson's writing ability and the way he foils about with video game adaption and melding of genre, a mix of Western and Mad Max, is best shown in the opening of Resident Evil 3, as it looks like a generic revisit. All third films in a trilogy tend to do this, go back to the beginning. Again, Resident Evil 3 is a reaction to the outcry with the second film, <laughs> before they just let Paul Anderson take control of the series for the better. And the B-movie trashed a piece is back on track, because the third film is the sloppiest one. Paul Anderson's writing is a leading aspect, as it has more of the video game feel, as Alice is tasked. Completing these tasks is the thing that drives the narrative forward, which is very similar to the first film. Sorry about this, Stevie. Thank <laughs> you.
Paul Anderson is back on board as a director, and it's clear. They'd been planning a fourth film even before the third film was released because they thought they would sell it with a 3D gimmick. And it doesn't get any more B-movie than that. Paul Anderson went full Edward on this film with his marvels of image fidelity with three dimensions. He created some of his best action pieces in this film alone. I think because of the 3D gimmick, Paul Anderson embraces slow-mo in the best way. Along with his kinetic editing, having moments where it just drops the music and sound, so you can appreciate the detailed fidelity of the image, as well as bringing back his toying nature to the fans of the video games. You should have brought more. and his bolt-like speed in narrative structure. And of course, his world building is off the wall ambitious, as it calls near to no resemblance to the last two films, with an aesthetic that is very clearly in homage to the latest video games, specifically at that time, Resident Evil 5. It's not clear to the naked eye just how suited Paul Anderson is for these films. Retaking the world he created off of Capcom's video game and deconstructs it as a video game adaption. We go from some kind of game of death ninja assassin raid in one moment to a post-apocalypto survival horror. Paul Anderson's snapping transitions are something to really study because he really doesn't pull them off but he does them anyway. Last words. Thank you. For killing you. For making me human again. From that to this. May 3rd, 1930 hours, Arcadia. No such place exists. Alice is logging her progress before completing the next quest. In a lot of ways, Paul Anderson may be trying to create the purest of video game adaptions by creating one in the confines of the action film format. You left in a helicopter with a group of survivors headed for Alaska. Arcadia, remember? As we go from one scene to the next, like exploring a map in a role-playing game, you stumble upon new places with different villains and expendable NPCs. Experiment on them. Look. It's Kmart, she's here. Still doesn't stop the fact that you are watching a film. So in the film's defense, its constant sense of movement keeps it adventurous. even as over the top as it may be. I think this may be Paul Anderson addressing that it's not an interactive medium. It can't be more than the voyeuristic one. Like a fly on the wall, or in this case, an umbrella in the rain, watching closely, but not too close I hope. This is the simplest form of movies, watching the whole thing unfold with one narrator dragging you along. Professor James Marcus. Marcus had a young daughter. My name is Alice. My name is Alice. The Umbrella Corporation thought they'd contained the infection. My name is Alice. I worked for the Umbrella Corporation. 
The defining chapter in the trash to piece is Retribution. This should have been the last film. To end on such a high note, as we question how they kept making these films, that when one of the best action films comes along, it's held down by the breadth and length of its predecessors. Retribution is a culmination of vision that took five films to reach. Clouds. They're not real. It's a holographic projection. Opening alone is a taste of what's to come because this is as slow-mo as it's going to be before the film begins. After that we get a blink and you'll miss it narrative. One moment away from collapsing in on itself. Creating a revolving arcade of set pieces and creating the epitome of escapism cinema. As Paul Anderson is the only director who could make this film, but more so Alice is trapped in a real Resident Evil video game. And in that way, it's the strongest film story-wise. What you saw was just a detailed recreation, nothing more. It goes on for a few city blocks, that's all. I was outside. Were you? They're using clones of me. Of course. You were one of the 50 basic models. Giving the fans what they wanted all along while making the most purest form of movies in a Jackson Pollock painting. Symmetrical shots, swipes and splats are all thrown on screen without meaning or purpose. The ambition of the action in this film is running against time as the opening is reversed as visuals overtake story as entertainment value in its simplest and most abbreviated form. Not everyone's gonna like it, and that's okay. I'm just trying to explain to you why Paul Anderson has a cult following. As we complete a daunting and impressively erratic epic on a scale so stupid, it's a trash to piece.